All right, guys, Rich here from the RC Network, and this is going to be a video on how I solder an RX-8 up to a vehicle. So um, the first part here, we're just going to go over uh, what all is needed to solder, uh, the things I use, and uh, just some planning uh, uh, of the RX-8 and the vehicle. So um, obviously you need a, a, a good soldering iron. Um, I have in the past used Weller soldering irons, but... I've burnt out actually several of them now, and I finally anteed up and got this Track Power TK950. Um, I, I really can't say that a good soldering iron is the key to this whole thing. I just can't believe how fast it melts the solder and just it makes the work just so much easier. So it's definitely worth the 60, 70, 80 bucks for a good soldering iron. Um, other tools that you'll need, and these are things that I use. Uh, you, you know, you may use different things in your shop. Um, I use a, a heavy um, set of needle nose pliers, uh, obviously, some wire strippers. Uh, you need some good wire. I use uh, the Novak wire, it's a silicone uh, covered wire, it's 12 gauge, it's great stuff, it's real flexible. Um, some good uh, solder, um, as much uh, lead that you can get in it, the better. <laughs> Is what I found um, uh, some servo tape, and this is not only to uh, you know use um, to hold the RX-8 in your vehicle, but I use it to actually hold it here to the workstation, just so it won't move on me. Um, I use Parma tape when I actually put it in the vehicle, so this is just stuff that I have left over from other kits that I use to stick it down to the table here. And then finally, the fan right here. I don't install my fan until after all the soldering is done. Uh, the least amount of plastic that you melt, the better. So um, I leave that completely out of the vehicle until it's ready to be mounted in, in the RX-8 after everything has been soldered up. So, um, And then last thing is just, you know, we're working with uh, very hot things. So, I mean, this TK950 will burn at 800 degrees. Um, it's hot. So if you miss or slip or do anything else, you're going to severely injure yourself. So please be aware of that. And uh, let's move on to some soldering. And before we start soldering, the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and place your um, RX-8 or speed control in your vehicle and see how you're going to route everything. Um, in my techno here, the ESC is right next to the motor. And if you have the soldering points right here, uh, there's not going to be much room to maneuver the wiring. So I plan to move all of the soldering points to the far side here, right next to the servo, and basically wrap them around up to the motor just to have a little bit more playroom, and it's going to look like a big pretzel if I have it just mashed all up right against the motor. So, um, you know, take that extra time, plan out how you're going to do your wiring. It'll definitely make sense in the long run and make your rig look a lot better. Um, and thus maybe perform better. We'll see. So uh, let's get on to uh, doing some wiring. All right, so we're about ready to start wiring up the RX-8, and you know, back to the whole planning portion of it, I typically will wire up all five of these uh, points here while the RX-8's out of the vehicle. That way, you know, you're doing things here on the workbench instead of in your $1,000 rig. So, um, Pretty much, I, I have a, a pretty lengthy um, set of wires here. I think it's about a foot and a half or so. And that's just off of a, a coil that I bought um, from the Novak wires. And all I did here was I went ahead and I cut off about an eighth of an inch and uh, went ahead and stripped the, the silicone um, protection off. And we're about ready to start soldering here. So, um, the layout is, is pretty crucial. Obviously, this is marked A, battery minus, B, battery plus, and C. So you want to make sure which one needs to go to which. So as far as pre-tinning, um, I usually use these little holders here. It just happens to work for me. I know helping hands definitely work as well. So feel free to use what you what you wish. I'm actually very comfortable using this. I mean, this thing doesn't move at all. These are a really heavy set of Greenlee needle nose. So pretty much all you're going to do is touch just a little bit of the solder onto the iron to get everything kind of going. 
and you'll see it just kind of flow onto there. Just make sure you want to have an even distribution of solder all the way on that tip. All right, so we're just pretending this last wire here. I've kind of sped up a couple of things. And go ahead and pretend this last one. Healthy amount of solder on there. And one thing I forgot to mention on the first pretend is you want to go ahead and take those needle nose and you want to go ahead and just place it in here and kind of crimp it just a little bit just to flatten out the solder point. So you'll see there it's kind of flat on one side, kind of like that. And if we focus in here a little bit better for you guys, you can see how this thing just kind of fits right inside there and has a little bit of play in there. So you'll see why we do that here in just a second. All right, so we went ahead and we pretend our wires. We've crimped them so that they're flat on the one side. Now we're going to go ahead and pretend uh, each of the posts here. And the, the main thing is these are um, kind of tapered in posts. So you want to get not only uh, solder on the bottom, but you want to get it on the walls of uh, the posts as well, just to make the, the best uh, soldering contact or uh, connection as possible. So pretty much all I do is I lay the solder right in here on the bottom, put this on the deal here and you'll start to see it smoke up and you'll see solder just kind of flow onto not only the walls but also on the bottom there a little bit too. And That's all you want to do. Alright so we're back now and I've already got all of my three wires pretend and crimped. I have all of my battery posts or my um, soldering posts all pretend as well. Um, I went ahead and I soldered up a Dean's connector with black and red wire, pre tend those two and crimp those as well. If you need to know how to solder up a Dean's connector, I do have a separate video on that and that will be in the video description as well. So let's go ahead and see if we can't solder up these wires. Now I plan to do these all going horizontal off of the... Um, RX-8, however, on the battery ones, I do plan to do those uh, going up and above, so that way I can connect my battery. So uh, keep that in mind, you can do either way on the RX-8, which is pretty cool. So all we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and heat up the terminal right here, get that solder all kind of flowing, all liquefied, and we're going to go ahead and drop that thing in and get that thing all melted. All good, it's all dried. Looks like there's 100% contact on all the walls and that looks good. All right, so I got all five wires soldered in. I got my uh, battery connection there and I've, if you notice, I kind of have an arc right there to where it goes over to where the battery is and that was done on purpose. That way it doesn't put any uh, unnecessary crimping in the battery wire. And I've actually had um, one fail before because it was I, I cut them off both at the same size and then had them pointing straight up and when it constantly bent, this one over here actually separated and there you go. So um, these three right here came off perfect. Those are very, very easy to solder in when they go at a right angle. So let's go ahead and get this thing mounted in the Techno and uh, let's see how I wire up the Pro 4 HD. Alright guys, so I'm back now and I've done quite a bit of work. I've actually probably done about uh, at least about an hour of work just kind of planning things out and doing some wiring and routing things and I did different options and whatnot. But I finally decided to do this route. Um, and, and Techno has done an excellent job of uh, the the wiring or the routing of the wires uh, for all the electronics. So I just want to go over that really quick. Um, the all pretty much all the wires kind of go down here, and they have these little kind of holders to hold the wires in, and they go basically into the radio case. Uh, I ended up using a Novak four-inch censored wire. 
Um, it, I had it from a previous build and it just didn't make sense. I mean, this is only about two inches in uh, spacing, so this, this four inch one made lots of sense. Um, as far as the switch, there's actually a little indentation right here that Tecno has made, um, pretty much for the RX-8 switch, which is pretty cool. Just double-sided tape, and that thing went in there pretty easily. Now, I have done my wires a little bit different than I planned. Originally, I thought about looping all the way around and back up to here, but it just there was so much wires and whatnot kind of everywhere. So what I've decided to do now is just basically kind of come over uh, the top of the ESC and land right there on top of the motor. So I'm going to go ahead and solder that up right now and we'll kind of go from there. So we're about ready to solder this thing up to the motor and you'll notice when I originally installed my RX-8 I had those long wires and that's just so I can kind of pre-plan and, and do things so that it makes sense and I don't have cut wires already when you're mounting the RX-8 in just in case you happen to change your mind. Now, other things that I've done, I've already pre-tinned my wires, so you can refer to previous in the video, and I've also pre-tinned the um, motor tabs here, and you'll see that my truck is on somewhat of an angle here. I have it actually propped up on some uh, rock beasts right here on top of my stand. You'll see the, the rock beasts. They, they, they actually have some pretty good rubber to hold the car in a, a very stable position right there. Um, and that, that is basically because my motor is on an angle in the truck, and I want the solder to stay perfectly level so it doesn't drip off into uh, the truck. So let's go ahead and solder the first one up here. This is the black wire, and I just verified that C is going to C so that everything is good. And we're just basically going to heat up the solder on the motor tab. Go ahead and stick it on there kind of melt that on in. There we go. And I am doing it at somewhat of an angle there and that's just to kind of keep everything uh, not from kinking. So let me go ahead and solder up the rest and I'll get on back to you guys. Alright guys, so I went ahead and grabbed the camera now. I finished soldering, so pretty much all the soldering is now done with the RX-8 and also the Pro 4 HD. Um, everything turned out very, very nice. I'm really happy with the routing of all the wires and everything's pretty good. Hopefully take you guys in somewhat close so you can see some of the soldering points right there. Seems like they turned out very, very nice. They seem like they have a very solid connection. Go ahead and throw you guys up here on the motor. Everything looks pretty good. So very happy with the way this all turned out. I can't wait to get this thing on the track. I should be out hopefully tomorrow to test out this Techno SCT410. And I'll definitely throw up some videos on how well this new Gen 2 RX-8 and the Pro 4 HD did. So. Uh, definitely comparing that to the Gen 1 RX-8 and the Pro 4 4600. So that's it for now, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little tutorial on how to solder an RX-8 and a Pro 4 HD. That's it for now, guys. Thumbs up and subscribe. Over and out.